almost there. We have a beautiful sweater, warm mittens, toasty socks, but if I were to go out just like that, I'm pretty sure that my ears would freeze over with icicles. So today we are going to knit some vintage winter appropriate headwear. When it comes to the vintage ski headwear options, the variety is absolutely delightful. We have long stocking caps, pointy hoods, cat ear hoods, <laughs> but I think I'm going to get my inspiration from my favorite design, which is a ski bonnet or a Dutch bonnet. So in today's episode, we are going to be grabbing the inspiration from the color work of the sweater that we've already knit and tying it into the vintage Dutch caps that I've seen knitting patterns for. So we have warmth and coziness with a dash of that vintage flair. So to start, I can't knit just straight from that bonnet pattern that I found because the basically resolution is different. So they are eight stitches an inch and 10 rows an inch versus the yarn and needles that I'm using to match the sweater that I am knitting, five stitches an inch and six and a half rows an inch. And one of the most important parts, in my opinion, is choosing what pattern is going to go alongside my face in the Dutch bonnet. Now taking a look at the color work on the sweater that we have, we kind of have two options. This star or this kind of eye braid braid but it also kind of looks like an eyeball i i don't know <laughs> also yes through the magic of editing you've already seen this sweater finish but i have to work on all of this kind of at the same time so this is still in an unfinished state while i'm starting the dutch cap but after doing the math the height of the color work so how tall the color work can be is only 14 rows which is very difficult to get a matching one of these stars in, so I've decided instead to do the braid around my head kind of like this. I thought that would be really cute. So the other complication is you have to turn the pattern then from being diagonal to going straight, and I have come up with this pattern. See what I mean? It kind of looks like an eye, doesn't it? And hopefully that works out okay. Last bit of information is that this bonnet is knit in two, two main pieces and two tie ends. So you have the front bit that goes from ear to ear and a back bit that gets attached to the back of it. And then you have two tie pieces where you can tie the bonnet underneath your chin so that it'll hopefully stay in place. So I am going to start with a bit that goes from ear to ear. I think that's the most interesting part because it has the color work and a lot of the shaping that goes on to make this Dutch bonnet and bonnet and one that folds over with the color work showing on the correct side. So I'll show you how we do that. Let's grab the needles and let's start knitting. Now, right before I show you the color work results on this bonnet, I wanted to take a moment to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Proven. As you might know from my various organizational videos in my room, I have so many crafting things because I have a ton of interest in different things and my wish for in-depth research and wanting to try different things extends to many other parts of my life, including my skincare routine. I grew up as a teenager in Florida and I refused to wear sunscreen, so I am now trying to figure out how I can best treat my skin and very much like my fiber crafting tools, I have ended up with a huge collection of different things that I don't know if they work well. It's cluttering my countertop. It's just exhausting and a little bit overwhelming for me to try to figure out my right skincare routine, which is why I am very happy and excited about Proven. Proven is skincare that is based and personalized around you, your skin history, your skin requirements, your heritage, where you live, the season that you're in. You take this quiz and you answer all those different questions and it personalizes just a three-step routine. And that is exactly what I need. It's delivered directly to my door. It comes in really beautiful packaging and it has all of the information about the different skincare steps right there for you. So for me in the morning, I have my personalized moisturizer, 
I try to do my best to wear sunscreen every day, but I'm not always the greatest. So to have this one cream that is my moisturizer and my sunscreen all in one is perfect for me. In the evening, there is a wonderful cleanser. It's like a toner and cleanser in one. And this really lovely hydrating moisturizer and night cream that I put on every single night. I have personally noticed a difference. I've been using it for a few weeks now. And people like in my life that I haven't told that I've been using this have also said, man, your skin looks really nice. And I agree. I do feel like from two weeks ago to today, I am already noticing a difference and I can't wait to continue evolving the skincare to work with me and my needs and what the seasons are and where I am. And another thing that I really enjoy, you might realize I am currently at my parents' place. So I travel frequently between my place in California and my parents' place. And it's so nice to not feel like I'm trying to pick and choose what parts of a skincare routine I take with me. I take three items that fit perfectly well into my travel bag and I take my entire skincare routine with me. It takes the weight of an entire stuff pack off of my shoulders and I have everything that I need and that my skin needs while I am on the road. What I also think is wonderful is that Proven has given all of my viewers a discount code, which is Engineering Nits. So click the link in the description below and enter the promotion code Engineering Nits, and you'll get the entire system for $99, which is a 50% discount. Feel free to check them out if this is something that also really interests you. And let's get back to some more knitting on this lovely ski bonnet. All right, so the color work band is done. I think. I think kind of the translation of the pattern to horizontal worked out pretty well. It's a little thicker than my original. Hold on. So here's the one that I got from the original sweater. Whoops. Right there. And then here's the one that I copied out and I had to change the direction of it. But I, I don't think it's too bad. I think the size match is generally okay. Holding this up to my head, I love how that looks. And now we have to kind of make the rest of the shaping back. So. What the pattern says first is to knit one and a quarter inches in the fawn color. So I'm gonna go back to my off-white and knit one and a quarter inches. I'm confused a little bit because you're supposed to start and end the section on a knit row and then the section after that is also knit. So I think that's the fold over point, but then it would mean that some of the fawn is showing. Yeah, so I'm Mm, I, I feel like my words aren't coming together to explain this properly and it's not coming together in my brain right either. So sometimes I just knit what the directions say and when I do that, it becomes clearer. We're gonna knit a bunch of rows in, <laughs> in the off-white color and I will come back once we get to the fold over part or what I think is the fold over part and we can discuss how that's working. That was very quick for both you and me. The first one and a quarter inches of the off-white color is knit and it's knit in exactly the same stockinette orientation as the rest of it. So the way I understand this cap is to be worn at this point where you change from in my version the green to the off-white you fold it over and then that is what is worn against your head here and now I'm knitting from here back towards the back of my head. And it's at this point, after ending on a knit row, that the pattern wants to do another knit row. So we are reversing which side is the right side of the fabric and which side is the wrong side of the fabric. And the reason for that is if we continue to knit like this, where the fold over is, and I'll show you what that looks like, you would get the wrong side of the stockinette stitch showing when you're wearing the cap. So now we reverse it, but I think the part that was confusing me is usually when you reverse the work, you do it at the point of a fold over because that can make a really nice and crisp line. And here we're doing it part way. So when we did the fold over, let me see if I can show you. We're doing it part way into this overlapping section. I wonder if I'll get like an interesting crease there or something. I, I don't know. I just haven't done it like this before. Oh, as an example, um, it doesn't happen on this vintage sweater, but it has on vintage ones I've seen in the past and ones I've knit. The collar here, if it's folded over and you knit in ribbing, you put in one row of just pearl and then you do ribbing again and that pearl row creates a really nice fold over for your turtleneck or your folded over edge. 
think it's called like a mock neck sweater. So that's kind of where I've seen this before. So this is a bit new to me where this switch isn't happening on the exact fold. So I'll be right, I'll be back in just a second and we can see what that looks like. The fold over part is knit, not fully, but just a little bit. Um, and it's not even full, the fold over part, it's not the right thing to call it. But anyway, the part where we switch the orientation of the stockinette stitches. And I think if, all right, <laughs> let me see if I can show this. So I think if I fold it over now on the color distinction and I turn that around, you can start to see where we switched. And it does, it, it's going to turn out really nicely because this will now show that the right side of the stockinette will be showing once you fold back the color work portion. One thing that you can maybe notice is that my work wants to automatically fold over on that switchover part, just like I thought, because usually this is where the fold over, I, I would do it. That's how I would make the fold over nice and crisp. I don't think it's going to cause huge problems, but it is, I thought that might happen and it has, but I think we can combat it a little bit, especially since it seems like they at least managed to wear it for the picture nicely. So I'm hoping it'll sit nicely at least for a little bit. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to just continue knitting on the fawn portion uh, until we get to some shaping. So I have, I have like 10 rows left to stockinette stitch and we'll catch up again after I finish that. Here's what the piece looks like now. I have fully finished knitting the flat knitting part of this bonnet, that this will kind of go around my ears or my head like that, oh, a little bit. <laughs> That's hard to see. So we're at about this point of the bonnet on my head. And now we're going to do some short row shaping for the crown here. There are some bonnets and designs from the 50s and 40s that have a very purposeful little peak here. I think there's a name for it. I can't, I can't think of it right now. But this one is supposed to fit the crown of your head very, very closely. So we're going to do some short row shaping first there. And then what's the rest of the pattern? And then we cast that off and we have the entirety of the top portion of the bonnet done. So let's go knit at that. I might have said this wrong before, but it wasn't just short row shaping. We had to do short row shaping and some mirrored decreases. The pattern just says decrease, and I wish I would have been paying a little bit closer to attention to where the decreases were placed because I would have had them lean in opposite directions. I just had them lean all the same way. So this side looks nice. Can kind of see those really lovely decreases and then the other side should look similar but because i didn't lean the decreases the opposite way it looks in my opinion a little clunkier a little funnier and it could have looked it could have had the same visual impact if i did the decreases leaning the other way but now the crown portion is done and don't I look wonderful <laughs> i think the final bits of it will really come together in the construction <laughs> But as a bit of an idea, this is kind of what the head shaping did and the decreases and everything. And I think that comes down and around really nicely. The next bit is the back 
And it's basically, I think the one I've done before was like a upside down U shape. This one goes out a little bit first and then rounds out. So let's go finish that really quickly. It's just a flat small piece that looks like this. <laughs> so we start kind of narrow at the bottom, we increase out and then we round out the top. So now we need to attach this back onto the back of this bonnet piece. I think seaming is one of my least favorite things, but it, it makes the structure so nice. So one of the things that should hopefully help with the curling of this piece and is really wanting to curl on me is the fact that I'm doing a double row of crochet edging around the sides. What you might have also noticed how we actually attached the back piece to the rest of it is with a few rows of crochet, which when this is on my head should be a little bit of a ridge that sticks out, which I think is super adorable. And now that I look at the image better on the pattern, I notice it. A lot more. I like that shape. After I finish this second row crochet though, do you see all these ends that we have to weave in? We have to do all of that, but after that's done, we can go to the final reveal of this really, really cute Dutch bonnet. So let's go do that. I'll see you there.